You're listening to 94.4 FM, Salford City Radio, the, the Friday Sports Show. <laughs> You're listening to 94.4 FM, the Friday Sports Show, with your host, Jimmy Petruzzi, bringing news from local area and around the world. Very fortunate show to have interviewed some of the world's best athletes, sports people, coaches, trainers, uh, you name it, they've been on the show. We bring Salford to the world and the world to Salford. We want to really increase awareness of sport and participation. That's the goals of the show. Um, but we also want to give people uh, an insight into different roles in sport as well. We have a segment speaking to some of the world's most influential people in the field of psychology and related fields. And that's fascinating for a lot of people. To Today, we have a fascinating guest who's been on the show before and is giving us an insight into what it takes to prepare for football physically. Um, he's worked in football for a long time. Um, he's going to be talking about his, his, his role at the moment. He's head of recruitment at Bake Up Borough Football Club, which is a fascinating role and a great club. And it's a great opportunity um, for anyone listening who might be considering um, having a go, seeing what they're all about. It's just a fantastic club, uh, fantastic non league club, well run. Um, Chris Honor, welcome to the show, great to have you on board. Hey Jimmy, it's fantastic to be here, really appreciate you inviting me back, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's great to have you on the show and, and you know, as soon as it sort of, you know, was, was drawn into my attention that you took the role, I thought we've got to get you on air and, and sort of get it out there and, and absolutely and what you know, great opportunity for, for yourself and for the club to, um, to, to, to sort of get players involved and, and see see any players who are looking to get involved there's obviously a lot of talented players that slip the net in football as we well know um but with yourself as well chris you know you, you had a recruitment but you also have other strings to your bow in terms of um developing players too so it'll be interesting to see how that sort of ties in together too so tell us a bit about the role chris i mean what 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 sort of our listeners are probably wondering what does a uh, recruitment head of recruitment do tell us a little bit of an insight into the role a little bit about it, right? So yeah, it's a, it's, for me, it's, it's um, I don't want to say it's a new role for me, but it's certainly it's certainly a very challenging role. Um, mm. I mean, a, a lot of it. The easiest way to describe it is uh, I'm basically responsible for getting players into the club, um, identifying the best talent within the Wasdale Valley um, and, the, and the local the local area from there, um, trying to identify the right fits. Most importantly, um, to come in and improve and maybe even um, establish new teams um, for the club. I mean, it's a huge vision of the club. Like, like you said a minute ago, Jimmy, I mean, friends have built a like, fantastic philosophy at, at Bank of Boy, who's, you know, you look at the history and the way the club's risen over the years, um, you know, they, they, they're onto something big. And one of the big things that sort of attracted me to the world was the amount of opportunity that there is within within a, a non league club because yeah. what I've got to understand is, you know, when you go in into working semi professionally, it's not there's not mass amounts of money in there and, you know, we're not going to be offering silly silly contracts and that. So what we've got to what what I'm, one of the key things for my role is identifying that we get the right player in terms of the right attitude and and more importantly will they be will they be a good fit to um, Develop and benefit the current squad members we have, whether that's mm-hmm. under 16s, 14s, or even going toward the uh, towards the first team at the moment. Yeah, and absolutely, that's 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 you know really interesting. And I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of players out there who've been at professional clubs and maybe been released, or there's players who sort of never played at that level or ever been affiliated to a professional club who sort of you know kicking a ball about have got a lot of potential, but. I mean, the great thing with yourself, Chris, is, is I think that, you know, some of our listeners have heard, maybe heard the interviews we've done before around training, and you've got that sort of background in, in physical training, and, and, and obviously, you know, that, that's a big thing, I think, in terms of, you know, recognising a player. I mean, in terms of that, do you feel that, you know, out there, there's players that maybe haven't been on the radar of any pro clubs or any sort of established clubs that you could develop into, um, you know, we've sort of seen players in the past um, and present who've sort of in, off the grid, really, off the radar, and in the right opportunity. I mean, there's probably no better club in the non-league to be, to develop. You've got, obviously, you know, Brent, you've got Dave Felger. You, I mean, you've got coaches there, 
you know, throughout the whole infrastructure that are dedicated, they're second to none, great at what they do. If you're good enough, you've got a great opportunity to, to, to sort of fulfill your potential. Do you see that as an opportunity as well, Chris, to sort of widen the net and, you know, maybe attract players who wouldn't normally have had a chance before? Yeah, 100%, Jimmy. I mean, the, the, key, the key thing is, is um, you know, what the players willing to do and what, what the players currently do it. Um, one thing I find this happened a lot um, through previous roles within um, football and education programs is players come over with a false understanding that they're automatically going to walk into a club. But what they've got to understand is, um, you know, how are they going to make an impact on on, on that club? Um, you know, what, what, skill, what skills they bring, what, what can they bring to the dressing room? I mean, if you look at, if you look at Leicester City, for example, in the Premier mm. League, who I support yeah. uh, Kasper Schmeichel Kasper Schmeichel did a podcast um, a, a while ago I think it was the High Performance Podcast and he actually said that I mean, Mark Albright um, who's been at the club five, six years um, doesn't play first in football week in, week out but what he does offer is he offers the encouragement the enthusiasm he's joke with the pack he's joke with the pack he gives something to the group um, mm. that, that makes the players feel good um, yeah, yeah, and I think when it comes to the, um, opportunities, um, a lot of the, a lot of the reasons for players falling off the radar is some of it is down to they, they just don't know where the opportunities lie. Mm-hmm. Um, and the problem, we've got, and, the, and the, the problem we've got, Jimmy, at the moment is there's um, well, right, depending on how you view this, you've got some businesses that will charge players eighty to one hundred pounds. Um, to go and do to go to a trial event or a showcase event. Yeah, um, yeah. Be put, be put in front of scouts from the biggest clubs, and they sort of sold it. This sort of sold a, a false sense of security on that one. They, they think, well, you know, I'm going to pay eighty pound, hundred pound. A Man United scout will be there. Mm-hmm. I know I'm going to get there, and then they get told that they're not going to get there. So, from a psychological point of view, they, they're taking another. Another staff appointment. You know what? What, what we're looking to do in a bank at the moment. Yeah. Is we're, we're finding that we're looking to get the players in that, that ultimately want to want to play for Baker and they want to buy into the philosophy. Yeah. Um, and they want to develop as a player. And they've got a clear vision themselves in terms of what, what they want to what they want to do. Absolutely. Um, we've got. A, I mean, we've got a great a great um, youth team coach at the moment with with Darren in there. who has got. You know, lots of conversations with and one of the key things we want to do is um, is create the player pathway I mean there are, there are areas that we can, we can certainly improve um, there's certainly new age groups that we can form to, um, to create a, a clearer pathway for the club um, but, but the most important thing with that is, is having the right people on board uh, from a coaching perspective and of course from a player's that perspective as well yeah, you know, absolutely. That's an interesting point you made about uh, Casper Michael. I remember Casper Michael. He, he he came on loan to us when I was at Barry, um, Chris. You know, and, 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 and yeah, yeah, it was just um, and and that's really really good analogy, I think, because there was a you know a, a lad that was at City, obviously, and City weren't obviously the team that they are at the moment, but they were still had a lot of pedigree and a strong strong outfit, and basically, sort of, you know, we 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 sort of in a situation where uh, we we'd lost a number of players and. And, um, and and sort of Chris Cass was the first team role, and and we we had the job was to steer the club away from relegation. You know, Chris Chris I believe got Casper uh, in, and I mean there's no player I've seen that's more professional, Chris, than Casper Michael. Just his attention to detail in terms of just everything you did, and and I suppose at the time we had um, you know that who was a great player himself. To be fair, it wasn't just in the squad to lift morale, but we had like the, you know, the, the analogy for us was the Flitcroft, who sort of, you know, the, the dressing room sort of um, figure, who sort of, and like he says, I think that it's, it's really interesting you say that, and I, I, I draw a lot of parallels to, you know, to, to sort of, obviously, like you mentioned there, Bake Up, and, and like he says, I think it's important they've got the infrastructure, you know, Bake Up, obviously, you got, you know, Darren, you mentioned there, he's a fantastic coach, a, a dedicated uh, professional who, you know, who puts the players first? But then on top of that, you got a pathway. You you, you know you got Felga in 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 the uh, first team, and you know he, he, I don't think there's a 
a better coach in Anongali. Obviously, he's a professional coach. He's been in the game, and you know, obviously he's been at teams like City. He's developed players, and on, on you know, on the world stage, I'll, I'll sit down and, and, and watch his sessions sometimes and learn and take things away. You got Brent, who's got an abundance of experience in 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 in, in the non league, professional as well. So I think for a player, if, if I was looking at it from a player coming in, like you says, and I sort of thought, you know what, I've got an opportunity here. Um, to, to, to sort of to, to, to get into youth level but there is you know Brent you know will give the players a chance no matter what age they are they're going to get an opportunity um, you're not going to get a better coaching than, than the likes of a Felgate really if you're a player and the guy has, has been there and done that in, in, in the world of football and I think that it's almost like the stars are aligned for the club. You know, even right through the media, you know, it's out there. You got the, the you know, the, the the commentary. The you know, Steve and and and, and Nicey there. They provide the commentary. It's, it's just a big platform. It's, it's it's set to go. I think it's taken a, a long time, a few years to, to get there, in terms of a lot of hard work from from sort of Brenton, you know, from top to bottom. Um, you know, even even the likes of uh, you know, Deborah who sort of. Um, you know, behind the scenes, and I'm sure you'll sort of grab a bite the the, the famous bake up pie as well. And but it's, oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But it's like almost like there's, there's an alignment there. You know, with yourself, you, you know, you, you give the the players an opportunity to showcase their talent. You know, players might think bake up non league. Obviously, you got Burnley down the road. You got Rochdale down the road. But realistically, if you're a player, young player coming into the game, and you you know you really want to push on the first team football and stand out. It's on a plate for you to give it a good go, and is that you think a, you know a big selling point, a message that needs to get across to, to any potential players? Look, you, you've got an opportunity here. You know, Bake Up is no strange to the big big players. You've had the likes of David May playing there in the past, and many other players. You know, I could do a whole podcast that have played there. Is that a big selling point for players? Do you think to sort of to come along and show what they're all about? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think the most important thing is that. Um player does the due diligence and they, and they do the research on any club that they join yeah. because ultimately, ultimately the player player or the parents of a, of a player in the instance of the youth team athletes is they need to make sure they're getting the, the, the correct testing and, and in my in my day job with, with strength and conditioning we, we, yeah. we, I hear it a lot that, um, that, that their son or daughter is not getting the, the right opportunities um, to develop the talent and, it, and it's very very and it's very generic uh, it's very easy to be taught under a generic that if that makes sense. Um, mm. And I think a lot of it, sometimes what people will look at, Jimmy, on, is, is the club, is the, it's just they'll look at the club badge and think, do you know what, you know, I can turn around and say, I'm, I'm playing for Burnley or I'm playing for Burnley Cup. But, but what does that club actually mean to them? What has that club done in the past? And, like you, you rightly said, the likes of David Mays played for Ben Thornley and you know, Carlo Nash is, yeah, yeah, Nash and I as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I sort of, yeah, Nash. I, I took Nash under my wing uh, at, when he was at Crystal Palace. And, and long story short, anyway, uh, this this shows my age how long I've been been in this game. But but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, when he sort of came when he came down the palace, and uh, you know, I, I was helping the conditioning coach uh, down there, and 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 he would send me individual plays from from sort of palace to work on and. Um, it's been that long that she probably doesn't even remember now. But but we had like oh, a little, yeah. Yeah, we had a little, little training center, um, and and we do like you know physical work in this little little training center, and and the, the conditioning coach, the head conditioning coach. I mean, it was like one of the first in the game. That so it, it was revolutionary at the time to have a conditioning coach. You know, Palace had one, and a couple was manager. The conditioning coach was sort of. You know, semi play Dave Richardson was semi like individual players to work on, and Nashi was one of them. He, I think he got released from Clivero or somewhere, but he made his way down to to, to Palace in, in you know in, in in the Premier League at the time. But yeah, it shows what a small world it is. But it, 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 absolutely. But the, and and the reason I use that analogy is the attention to detail, Chris. I mean, the effort he put in, you know, not just in training, but to sort of work with people like myself on the periphery, goes to show how important yeah. it is to sort of do work outside. Um, that's for sure. So I think that there's, there's something in that story where you kind of think, okay, I'm, I'm sure it was Clivero who got released from something like that, and and basically, yeah. but he was he played, um, you know, obviously at the at the high football. Yeah, and, no, sorry, he didn't get released from Clivero. He got released from uh, I don't recall where he got released from, but he, he was at Clivero and they made the uh, Vase Cup, I think final or one anyway. It's that long ago, it's over twenty twenty something year ago now. 
but it, but but I believe like he stood out in the non-league and, and Palace took a chance on him, and the, the conditioning coach at Palace at the time that I was working with, uh, you know, asked me to do some extra training with him outside, and it sort of goes to show that you know, I mean, you make a good point that you're a conditioning coach, you're one of the best in the business. You work with you know a lot of teams and players that you do need to work outside too if you can if you can fit that in definitely. Yeah, most de- most definitely. I mean, we you know we, we day to day we sit. I mean, last season we, we worked with um, with a, with a, a player that, that went to the World Cup a few years ago, and um, I don't know if I can name names for the data protection purposes, but yeah, um, basically work with this player who's, who's a huge name and is you know he's played the Premier League, he's played for his country, and um, the work when you when you get to speak to this person and he's just a gen- he's just a, a genuinely nice guy who just wants to fight for his family. And for a player, you're not, you're, if you're going into the game for money, you're in the, you're in the wrong you're in the wrong game because, um, or even in life, if you're going if you're going to do a job or you're going to play football for money, that's going to be the wrong motivation, and it's yeah, not going yeah. to get you where you want to be. And I think to go back to Carlo, I think um, I think Brent found I think Brent had actually scouted scouted Carlo. Um, that's right. Yeah, yeah. In, in local club team, I think it was. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, Absolutely. All around the world, and, and all it takes is some. You never know who's listening. I mean, I, I, I've got this analogy that you're always being watched. Um, you, you could, you, you know, you could be uh, playing playing football on the park, doing, mm-hmm. you know, running, running out of cones, and you never know what who's going to walk past. You could have a NFL manager, a scout manager. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. But, the attitude of the player, yeah. Whereas if you've got somebody who's sending a, a CV and 
that played for, I'm not saying this player played for this club, but this player played for the Salford or Atlington or a yeah. big club. We could look at it and think, well, you, you might have played for these big clubs, yeah. but maybe the reason you've been released by this club is because you weren't, you weren't doing enough. You weren't doing enough. You weren't communicating enough. You might you weren't um, putting. You weren't doing the extra physical training. You weren't doing it. You weren't. You know you, your mannerisms weren't right. And I think what's the key thing to me with with mm. um, with football at all levels is how much communi- how much communication and feedback do they get from the clubs that they're, they're working at, and how do people how do people perceive them? Um, mm-hmm. I think also mm-hmm. if they can understand how people. Um, see them and they'll be in a better position to be able to, to market themselves to to a, to a club such as Bay Cup or, or Burnley. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think, I think players need to understand that. No, absolutely. There's some great points, and I think you've made some really interesting points there, Chris. Some great points, and I think for sure, and you know, definitely at Bake Up, I suppose, if you sort of players listening and thinking about training and and, and other things, for, you know, and, and that sort of stuff. Okay, well, they sort of, you know, thinking, well, what sort of training do I get in terms of development? The re- I mean, you could you could make a case that obviously, if the likes of Felga, who's been at you know huge clubs, the, the, the likes of City. Brent's been in the game for years yourself and you know you mentioned Darren there there's some some I think you're going to be at a hard yeah I mean you got some like top class coaches I mean you'd be lucky to get in that in, in professionally and these are sort of coaches that you know um, for me you know pound for pound w- w- would walk into to many professional outfits you know without a shadow of doubt um, that's for sure so I think from that perspective for a young player listening you know it's like um, wow, you know, you got these opportunities to sort of to, to do the right things in training, to get the right advice on how to train. Um, you know, that's a big thing as well, because obviously at this level, semi-pro level, you don't go in every day. Um, but you know, you, you you are depending on players who do want to sort of develop to do their own thing outside the club as well, if possible. But you know, there's no no club better placed, I think, in in my opinion, um, with 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 sort of you know, staff, and like he says, getting exposure as well, getting out there, getting your name known. I mean, you you, you know, obviously the, the commentary, you know, Steve Brown, you got Ian Nice, they, they do the commentary as well. And that in itself, it's like, you know, it's out there. It's, it's, it's a global thing. There's people listening everywhere, really. I mean, I'm under no illusions. Obviously, players want to play at the highest level they possibly can. Um, that's for sure. You know, and getting into Baker's first team is, is is not a given. It's it's a strong team. It's you know a lot of good young yeah. players. And like he says, is you know this season, if if you know things had been a bit different, um, you know the club could have had silverware and, and maybe promoted. But you know it's one of them. You know what football's like. We've been in the game for a long time. Yeah. It is what it is. So there's no sort of given. Anyone's going to get into you know. You know, Brent's not going to pick a player on past reputation. You got to do the goods now. And and like he says, with, with Carlo and other plays, he knows a player, Brent. He's he's been around in terms of um, you know the attitude in the dressing room, what's going to bring to the club, um, which is key. But I suppose you know, you know, people listening in thinking, you know, should I, should not? These trial days, they've probably been released from a club, and you know, they're contemplating or they did a local, you know hero for, for like an amateur club thinking should, should I give it a go it, it, you know it's a warm friendly environment they're going to get that's the important thing they'll be welcomed oh, 100% yeah 100% I mean the good thing about Baker Boer is I think you know the first time I walked into the club it was first thing I was asked is you know do you, do you want to brew yeah um, you know the, 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 it's you know do you want to brew and then that was it and sort of like having a chat with Bennett about, about the role and, and just just the pride that Pride that, that Brent's got and that Deborah's got and that everybody who works for or Bake or has because of the history. Because the moment you walk into that clubhouse, there's a lot of memorabilia along the wall. Yeah. And you just have to look around. We've got, you know, United shirts. There's, I think, Matty James's. Matty mm. James was born in Bake had a great and still playing to the day. You yeah, know, yeah. You speak to, if you speak to people like Brent and, and Deborah himself and people that work there's always a story behind it and then when people you know, go back to the due diligence of doing the, you know, your research on the clubs, when you look at what links these the non-league clubs have got and the role they've played in the development of players, when you look at um, Kevin Phillips, for example, 
Mm. He was just taking it. You know, he had some great awards, had a fantastic career and played a few games for England. But something's drawn him to non leagues. He was first team coach at Leicester and Derby two yeah. or three years ago, but he's been he's been pulled away from the professional game to be the manager of South Shield. So there's mm. got to be a reason that so many ex professionals have come into the non league game to you know, to cut their teeth into management or into playing. So then go on, Mikel, An- Mikel Antonio, for example. That's right, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. You know, he, yeah. he, I think he played in academy football, got released, he, he, he played a few, he played got a few years, and in the non league, I think he wasn't picked up until about 23, 24. Jamie yeah. Vardy, the same again, you know, we don't need to talk too much about Jamie Vardy. Yeah, 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 yeah and, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he and Wright, one of the best players in the game, yeah, yeah. Well, it is about the network and, you no, know, that's... And going back to, to ben, so going back to like Bacon, I mean, you know, you've got yourself who's, who's massively into the psychological element, um, um, so, you know, I've got a great network as well, obviously Ben, but his network of people in the league, and, you know, we, we might not look like the most fashionable club um, to somebody that doesn't know the club, because they think it's a non-league club, but what do you really know about that club and what it's done in the past and the influence that it's had on, on people's careers going forward because once you once you start to understand the reason behind people spend like Brent spent twenty five years at the club, over twenty five years at the club, there's gotta be a reason why people dedicate so much time to to the non league game. Absolutely. So uh, no, absolutely, and it's interesting you say, and, and, and you know, close to the here as well, you've got the, the class of 92 of Salford, you know, oh. like you said, it's, it's, you know, Salford in the same division um, as, as Bake Up at one point, so, you know, they got involved, and I think, I think it's, I mean, everyone for different reasons, but I think the buzz of the non league, it sort of brings football back, it's what football's all about, really, I mean, as much as I love the professional game, and like yourself, Chris, I sort of get to games and love the pro game, and I'm still involved, with a stable of players at the highest level, that sort of stuff, you know, and, you know, it's great, but I think in terms of pure buzz, I mean, there really isn't any place you'd rather be than a Saturday afternoon, non-league, big game, it's just incredible, the buzz from start to finish, you walk through the doors, the buzz, there's a communal atmosphere, it's just got everything really, it's got everything you could wish for if you're a football person, that's for sure, uh, it really has, but I suppose you mentioned the trials, I'm sort of, you know, I don't want to take too much more of your time, Chris, but how can players... Do, I mean, this, this is a pre-record, so obviously some of the trials um, for people listening may have already gone by the time this sort of goes out, but but equally, you know, no doubt you're, you know, you, you'll know, you be on it 24-7, Chris, if a player wants to... Get you know what? It's funny to turn that because, you know, although, although, it's a, although it's a role, and, you know, people say that, people say that, you know, Barry, you know, Barry Sanders was selling Absolutely, you know, the excitement, the buzz, yeah, definitely. The excitement, the people you meet, the opportunities that could arise from it. Yeah, yeah. You know, what legacy can you leave? And for me, it's about you know, can I, can I, you know, whether I leave Baker in five years, ten years, twenty years, whatever. What you know, what have I done to help with that? But what have I helped done to help? Um, yeah. That because I, 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 you just Cristiano Ronaldo and the influence that that um, that Mick Clegg had on, on Cristiano. Exactly. Absolutely. Still, Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's still gone, isn't it, for sure? And, and yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Oh, incredible, like, when you think of um, Ronaldo and, and what he's achieved in the game and achieving in the game. I mean, you know, and, and to think, and, and that's a really interesting point you made, and to think, Chris, that <laughs> even Ronaldo, even, even he's got his doubters. So it goes to show if your player has been, been released, you know, there's, there's always an opportunity. Uh, that's for sure. I mean, even even the sort of the great Ronaldo <laughs> has had his critics this year. I just can't get my head around it sometimes in terms of you know. But it is what it is. And so, what can I do, Chris? In terms of you know, what's the the twenty four seven Chris hotline? Twenty four seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know no, no, don't, don't call Chris at twenty four seven. You'll you'll have set times. You can email him and he'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll get kicked out of my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is all <okay>. kill <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Definitely. You might you might get a call from Ronaldo the way things are going at the moment. <laughs> He'll be like, my name's Cristiano. <laughs> I, I need a club. Well, if Cristiano Ronaldo comes to Bacon, I'll eat me hat. I'll tell you what, time, if, if, if there's one manager that could, could pull that off, mate, it's Brent. <laughs> get him on the phone to Brent and he'll be wearing a Bacon shirt, I guarantee you, mate. Absolutely, absolutely. It, w- it wouldn't have, wouldn't it just be a. It'd be great, wouldn't? It? But one way to get one up on Burnley and and, and Rossdale, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> We've got Chris Chan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 yeah, if they do want to get in touch, Chris, with you, mate, what what can they do? The, anyone sort of listening? Any any players who think you know what, or even parents, obviously listening, who want to bring their, um, you know, their their their. their, their the the lad down or what what can what can they do to get in touch and sort of know more about these sort of trials and other things that you know you've got a lot of things in the pipeline too by the way but how can they get in touch yeah. Chris initiate contact yeah no so I think first and foremost um, keep you know follow follow back up on, uh, on social media platforms yeah. um, a lot of this a lot of the stuff that we do um, will be going on the social media platforms we'll put all the contact details on there as well you can on the club website. Um, Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. Chris Honor. Um, so Honor is spelled H H O N O R. Feel yeah. free to connect with us on that um, or email um, Chris at um, H O N O R Athletic. dot That's Chris at Honor Athletic. dot co. dot uk. And if you're a player or a parent of a player um, that does want to um, is interested in finding out about more about our youth development. Um, Player pathway, or if you're a senior player that's interested in getting involved as well, um, please do not send me a blank email. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, because I'm, I'm not going to lie, if, if you know, if, if people just just send a CD, people just send a CD with no no text, it, it will get put to the bottom of the pile. That's not yeah. me being funny about that. No, no, um, absolutely, yeah. It's yeah. got to be more personal, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Yeah, um, but, if, but if they do, yeah, just. just Send us emails. Tell us a bit about yourself, about your, your son or your daughter. I mean, the, the, you know, there is there is scope potentially in the future of um, of having a women's team. You know, we, we never, absolutely, never yeah. Never. Absolutely, and, and and with yourself, you know, having you know, like worked in the game as well, you know, for I think that, that yeah, it's a, a great opportunity and a great uh, you know to, to set things up at some point there. Obviously, yeah, definitely, Chris. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of exciting things going on yeah. at, the, at the club at the moment, and you know, we're, we're, I think you know yourself, Jimmy, being part of the club, passion takes over, and you know, it it it, it is a full time role. Well, being honest, because you always you always answer the emails, or you always um, yeah. looking at some way that you can bring a player in, or looking at ways to move the club. So if you're somebody that you know you feel that could. Um, could help out in a coaching capacity as well, or or in a playing capacity again. Feel free to get in touch. You know, my, my email box, my, my uh, you know, the right candidate. Um, I'm more than happy to arrange a phone call and you know have a conversation and um, set up the right channels if you need to get involved with, with the club. Yeah, no, brilliant. That's great, uh, Chris. I'm sure there's people listening at the moment, especially like at this time of year and. You know, it's sort of moving into off season. Um, you know, like pre season, and yeah, absolutely, it's a good time to sort of you know get it out there. And, and anyone listening, we have a a wide audience. The, the, you know, a, a big reach. Uh, the show is a big reach. It sort of goes out in in in, in a lot of areas, um, not just in the northwest. Also, you can listen around the world. So people do do listen in everywhere, really. So anyone listening in, you know, Chris has been kind enough to come on the show. And, and talk about his involvement at uh, Baker, but also it's given you an opportunity to, to get in touch, you know, whether it be LinkedIn or the Facebook page for Baker or, you know, Chris's own LinkedIn. Um, yeah, you know, definitely. It's, it's a club on the move, um, that's for sure. It's, an, you know, going to be an exciting season uh, next year, no doubt. And, and what have you got to lose, you know, in terms of putting your name, you know, your, your hat in the ring? I think as a player... Um, if you're sort of contemplating, you're not sure, you're going into a welcoming environment, you'll get a good good go. Um, 
and and obviously you know enjoy it that's the sort of key you know, get involved but i really want to thank you for coming on board chris it's been fascinating uh to know more about what you're doing and it's been an opportunity to sort of you know get the word out there and and certainly uh you know increase that awareness and 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 you know of, of what uh different roles involve and also different opportunities that might present themselves you know the players out there that might not have been aware of of this opportunity um to to sort of showcase their skills to to, to a, a club with a strong tradition uh like bake up that's certainly um you know on the move and going forward um but here you go that's this is the the, the platform so thanks again chris for coming on board the show I mean, yeah, it's an absolute pleasure, Jimmy. Thanks very much for, for having me on. Yeah, keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing, buddy. The shows are fantastic, and you know the quality of your guests has been absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, really, really enjoy it. Brilliant, it's thanks. Brilliant. Fantastic, thanks, brilliant stuff. That was uh, Chris Honor, who's head of recruitment at Baker Borough Football Club. Um, who's been kind enough to join the show on the Friday Sports Show, ninety-four point four FM, the Friday Sports Show, South City Radio, with your host. Jimmy Patricia.